And the mask mandate reaching a tipping point in many schools in our area. Just this week, hundreds of Oakdale students protested, refusing to wear a mask, and dozens of parents showed up outside schools to show their support. And just recently at Ripon Elementary, the principal there handed out a letter to some parents who refused to send their kids to school with a mask, saying the school could call Child Protective Services and possibly kick them out. This all comes as California's statewide indoor mask mandate is set to expire in just 10 days, but that would not apply to schools. And just like the Ripon principle, some schools are threatening parents with criminal charges, while others are threatening barefaced students with trespassing. So what are the legal requirements for parents in schools? CBS 13 investigative reporter Julie Watts is getting answers. Is this is a complicated one because the guidance for schools is, is pretty vague. The state says schools must enforce the mask mandate, but doesn't tell them how to enforce it. And that's causing confusion and vastly different enforcement between different districts. <laughs> Following the recent increase in school mask protests, there's been an apparent increase in mask enforcement by schools. For instance, some students in Western Placer Unified were threatened this week with trespassing charges if they returned to school without signing the district's mask mandate policy, which states the district must exclude students from campus who refuse to wear a mask, citing the ruling in a recent unsuccessful mask lawsuit against the state. So the lawsuit's been misconstrued by both sides. Jonathan Zackerson, who founded the Reopen California Schools Facebook group and is running for state assembly, was a co-plaintiff in that Let Them Breathe mask lawsuit. Let us it argued in part that the state was violating maskless students' rights to an in-person education. Some people are saying that the lawsuit eliminated the mask requirement, which is not true. He notes the judge agreed that CDPH does have the right to mandate masks, especially during a state of emergency. Uh, but the other side is also misconstruing it. The guidance does not require schools to exclude kids from the classroom or from campus. The state argued and the judge agreed, quote, there is simply no language in the guidance that requires, directs, or otherwise authorizes schools to force students into an independent study program. In other words, enforcement is up to each district, so the state can't be held responsible. But many feel that lack of guidance is the problem. There's vastly different ways that schools are uh, enforcing it. You have some schools threatening suspension and other districts that are rewarding kids for masking. For instance, Roseville Joint Union School District guidance states they'll make efforts to address the situation without excluding students from the classroom or from school, while neighboring Western Placer claims they must exclude students from campus who refuse to wear a mask. And this letter given to parents by the Ripon Elementary principal goes even further, threatening to call Child Protective Services on parents of maskless kids, in addition to threatening criminal truancy charges, disenrolling their kids, and even filing restraining orders. The Ripon School District later clarified it is not official policy. In a statement, Western Placer Unified alluded to frustration, noting the state has provided zero guidance on ways in which to approach enforcement, adding it is not the district goal to utilize law enforcement. Now, local law enforcement tells us they would not intervene over mask policies, but they would have to investigate reports of trespassing on campus. And while the courts found the state can't be sued for enforcement because it doesn't actually mandate how those masks are supposed to be enforced, Lawsuits against the schools and districts for excluding kids from campus haven't yet been litigated. Boy, frustrating mm -hmm. time for parents, as we all know. Julie, thank you.